Hi everyone, so today I wanted to continue talking about PS3 and I realize it's been a while since I posted any new videos. Um, I still plan on showing my BGA station at some point, um, but I also have some other ideas I wanted to discuss. So uh, the topic today is cell processor. And as you remember, we have successfully figured out how to retrofit 40 nanometer and 65 nanometer RSX into the early backwards compatible PS3 models. Um, but we can't quite do the same for the cell processors yet. And there are a number of reasons for that. So I just wanted to go over some of those challenges. So number one challenge is that the newer revision cell processors have been significantly redesigned, even though it may not look like it at first glance. And as I was reading the cell documents that are shared online, I found a very interesting difference that has been mentioned in one of the documents. So as you can see it here in this text, it says that uh, comparing to the 90 nanometer design, uh, the 65 variant requires the additional power supply designated as VCS. Um, and so uh, this is the first challenge that I came across because when I started looking at the schematics of different boards and um, the 65 cell has been used in SEM board, uh, and luckily we have schematic for that. So I checked out how the new power lines have been connected and I found all the uh, new changes that have been done. So you can see here, this is the SEM board. Uh, I checked out this power section and it's, it's very similar to the one on COK boards. However, this component, uh, which is, by the way, going under the same name as, the, as in the COK boards, uh, is different. Uh, and, and part of the reason is because it creates this additional VSC voltage uh, that's needed for 65 nanometer cell. And so, yeah, this is um, one difference. And these power control lines are also connected to Syscon. So, Basically, there's also a slight modification to Syscon that has been done in the, S, in the SEM boards. So yeah, this is something that could potentially be overcome, um, but it's gonna require some type of a mod chip, most likely, or some kind of clever redesign or modification to the power lines in the COK boards. As you can see, this is the COK board and the component number is the same, but the component itself is different. Uh, it's a simplified version, which doesn't need to create this additional VCS voltage. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> I put this meme face there because you know it can't be too easy. And also, uh, there's there are a few bypass capacitors added as well for this new voltage. But yeah, I'm not saying it's impossible. I'm just saying it's um, an extra challenge. Okay, so problem number two is that uh, when I started comparing the pinouts of, uh, of the two processors and um, on first look, if you look at these scans that I made, uh, they're not oriented correctly, but the layouts are mostly the same, but um, there is a slight difference, of course, that there is an extra row or two in the middle comparing to 90 nanometer version. Um, but yeah, but it's not actually quite that simple. When I looked, when I wrote out all the signals and contacts into Excel spreadsheet, I then put them side by side and um, I ran the comparison filter and then it came up with about 600 connections that do not match up. So basically all these blue ones, they are either mismatching or new. So 
this means we will need to create an interposer and uh, it's not it's gonna take some time obviously um, so quite a lot of rewiring will need to be done uh, in order to, to you know fit this new cell processor yeah about 600 connections will need to be rewired so yeah this is uh, challenge number two Okay, so the next difficulty that we will have is that uh, each processor is married to the board and we don't quite know yet how to remarry them. Um, however, both SEM and COK boards use NAND chips, so there's that kind of similarity at least. They also use the same type of syscon. Speaking about remarrying, usually what happens when you need to replace the cell you just take it with the NAND chips and the syscon. So they kind of all go together, all three of them. Um, but in this case, we cannot do that because obviously the boards are substantially different. Uh, CEM board has been stripped of all its PS2 hardware, so the firmware is simply not compatible. I think the biggest difficulties are still the new power supply and the interposer rewiring challenge. Uh, and I mean, I guess once that is done, maybe then it's possible to focus more on the software side of things. So another problem which I also mentioned about the new power supply is that um, Syscon will need to be obviously modified to understand it as well uh, because originally it doesn't have this power line in the COK board so there will need to be one more modification to the Syscon as well. In the end you might ask why do this in the first place because you know the original cell processor doesn't break or anything. Um, but yeah, I guess you could say there is no specific reason to do it uh, other than the fact that um, just for the sake of doing it and I guess in my case I just find it curious and you know I'm not like fanatically promoting the idea I'm just uh, I just find it interesting and you can always make the original console a little bit cooler as well because you know stock cell runs quite hot on the backwards compatible models. So in the next video I'm going to talk about uh, 28 nanometer RSX and why creating an interposer for that particular graphics chip should be a lot easier than for cell. I'm also going to try to show the idea behind it. So yeah, thanks for watching.